All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from rather hot San Diego. We're having a bit of a heat wave right now. And yes, you think it's hot all the time in San Diego? Well, it is, but it's a nice hot. We're actually in a heat wave. So this is a little bit of a hotter hot. And I'm joined by Michelle Van Der Pass, who's up in Colorado Springs. How are things up there? Hot, hot. as well? Yeah, hot here too. It's like we've been in high 90s. I am so ready to get back to regular temperatures. Excellent. And we're going to have a really interesting conversation today because Michelle is one of the nation's leading experts for entrepreneurs, personal development experts, and quantum leaders who want to share what they've learned with the world by becoming an author. So we're going to talk about how writing a book and what it can do for your business. So, so um, Michelle, a lot of people think... Uh, you know, that they have a book in them, um, but very few people ever get it out. Or right. maybe, especially in business, because people get very busy, maybe don't see the immediate business benefit of producing a book. What would you say? Okay, so there's two questions there. So the mm. first thing I'm going to talk about is why writing a book can be beneficial for your business. It's a little bit like um, having a TED talk or having a podcast, right? It gives you instant credibility. So just being able to say, oh yeah, I published a book on this subject gives you immediately uh, an elevated uh, exposure to an audience that you might not normally have. So the question I get all the time is, well, you know, I have to invest in my time and maybe mm -hmm. with an editor and all this to get the book published. Is it going to be financially worth it? And it is like marketing. So this is your language here, John. Sure. If you're out there marketing and you're spreading seeds and you're letting people know um, who you are, eventually that comes back in, in, into business, right? So is there a direct correlation? You wrote this book and got this client sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just the elevated exposure that people heard about you two, three, seven, twelve times, and then they're like, "Okay, this is the person I gotta hire." Yeah, right. yeah, and it's and it's like validation to you know that this person knows something. I think though the problem is a lot of people go into it thinking it's about the volume of books they're going to sell, you know, and and they don't realize number one, even the best business books um, they don't sell that many you know, per right. year. I can't remember what the statistic is or what the number is. But but what do you say to people when they say, oh, uh, maybe w when they launch their book, maybe they're disappointed because it's not selling immediately. But, but selling it isn't really the point, is it? Right. No, no. It's, I mean, yes, it's the point. And um, to a degree. Here, here, and so hopefully I've never taken an author to the stage where they're disappointed about book sales. We have right. had the discussion before we ever publish, right? Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Um, I had a client last year who wrote a book about, um, she's a publicity agent. And right. she wrote a book about how you get publicity, why you should get publicity, why, you know, what not to do, what to do, all of those kinds of things. And it was basically her long form sales letter. It was pretty mm -hmm. clear, it was a sales letter, right? You could go buy it on Amazon. You buy it and it's like, okay, it's all leading to the close down here. But here's mm -hmm. the thing. She gave them away to all her prospective clients and her minimum price points 10K. She didn't even have to sell one book to make her money back. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I think sell a half a book, right? Yeah. And I and I think that's the point is sometimes like the you have to be you have to be more realistic about the metrics or be aware of what the metrics that you're using to measure success with the book. Right. But here's the other thing. Um, you could sell a thousand, two thousand, five thousand mm. copies of a book, right? And that mm. <clears throat> will get you a little bit of income, but it also sets you up to be able to sell courses. So when we do business books, we make sure there's a clear call to action at the end of the business book. Go here and get the additional free content. Everybody that's listening to you know how, how this works online, right? They sure. all get the opt-in piece. We do the same thing on the book. So halfway through the book, if you want to go deeper, go to my website here and watch this video, right? And then a mm -hmm. course in order to get to the video is behind an opt-in. We don't, we don't make it usually obvious sales letter. Usually we don't. 
usually it's a really good book, but we make sure that there's a funnel so that it also acts as a lead generation for our clients. So then you start thinking, okay, 2000 books, 2000 more people on my list. Maybe, you know, you can do the metrics of what the click through rate's going to be and all that and how much extra business, but also again, you're elevated in the marketplace as being an expert Mm -hmm. that, you know, it's like having a Ted talk or having a podcast. I've, I've heard it's the the three trifecta that every business person needs. Um, so how do you, how do you help somebody who comes to you and says, okay, Michelle, I want to write a business book. I have this kind of idea, but I mean, what is the, what is the process? Because I think to a lot of people would sort of consider it, but they think it looks like a daunting prospect like getting from yeah. a few ideas to a like full book. Yeah. So the first thing I do is myself or one of the other head, um, coaches in the, in our publishing company, will just have a strategy session. So if I were going to ask you, John, if you were going to write a book, let's just say you're going to write a book about marketing. Tell me right now, what's the number one thing you would want your readers to know? So I'm going to put it out there. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, if you could ask you about um, marketing right now, I would say I would say the, for the number one thing people should know about is target audience, because I still think today a lot of companies don't know who their ideal buyer is. I love that. So then we'd go through a whole strategy session and say, let's pretend this is going to be the focus of your book. Mm -hmm. I'd ask you a question. Do you believe in the niche marketing thing? Do you like the avatar process? Do you look at things like demographics, age, um, education? Or are you looking at something different like, all the buyers have dogs or mm-hmm. right. Um, right? something totally obscure, but turns out that that's actually your demographic, right? Mm-hmm. And so you could do marketing in a different way. And we would dig in and then come up with, and you probably already have this, your process of how a business would discover who their target audience really is. Look at mm-hmm. your past sales. Look at where your clients spend the money now. Look at your biggest money spenders, but also look at those hidden ones that maybe don't spend as much, but are longevity clients, right? And then we would come up with an outline. Mm-hmm. And then in my company, you'd get assigned a business a writing coach and take you through the process of filling out that outline and getting a book done. Yeah, and I think that's an interesting part there because um, obviously, you know, some people would say, okay, that sounds like a good process, but then like, oh, I don't know how to write. But then you just said, okay, well, you would have a writing coach work with people. And here's the thing is most, a lot of people, I would say, are pretty good storytellers, especially people who've, you know, been in business for a while and all of that. So it really just takes somebody to help draw that out of them and get it onto paper. And I think it's less daunting than people think it is. Yeah, you don't have to be a great writer to be an author. So there's Mm -hmm. two kinds of writers out there in the world. There are writers who write, like they know they're going to write. They write 20 or 50 or hundreds of books throughout their lifetime. Every morning they sit down and write. Stephen King's a great example, right? Mm -hmm. There's, There's business people that do that too. Stephen Covey and Um, Jack Canfield and all kinds of people, right? Sit down every day and write. Then there's the rest of us who write one, two, three, four books in our lifetime, business books. Those people, I'm saying, you don't have to work on your writing craft. You really don't. You just have to get your thoughts on paper and a good editor is going to help you really Mm -hmm. polish them, pull out the stories, make them readable, make them interesting. If you want to be a writer, then yes, you want to work on your writing craft. If you just want to be an author and get your message out, that's what a great editor is for. Yeah, and I and I think that's the that's the part I think that people sometimes confuse. They think if I write a book, I'm going to actually be there like up at night typing, 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 right, and all of that. When the reality is, as you say, it's more about getting your ideas within a framework and somebody helping you draw them out and, and put them in the right order. Yeah, totally. And and everything is better with editing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can never have too much editing, right? <laughs> everything. Well, 
Well, you can, but that's a whole nother podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, okay, so so how do you keep uh, the momentum with somebody? Because I think that's another part is, you know, people like will get into a project like this and then after a while, there's always that. There's the enthusiasm, initial enthusiasm, then there's always the enthusiasm dip as uh, they realize, well, it does take a little bit of work and commitment. Oh, yeah. It does, and it is. Um, it triggers everybody's internal issues. Visibility. Yep. Do I really know what I'm saying here? Uh, what if people don't like it? Um, should I say it this way or that way? Right. I mean, stuff we didn't even know we had triggers about. We'll get triggered about. Doesn't matter. Uh, we'll help you. Th- we'll help you through it all. But what we do to help keep the excitement going is we do things like we work on book covers really early on. So we start seeing the energy of, oh, my gosh, this is what my book cover could look like. We do things like maybe test titles. So we get some feedback from the audience about what title is going to work well. Um, So we, we do some things like that, social media, maybe try to get them a podcast interview write a blog post and a press release and those kinds of things just to keep the excitement going. Yeah. And it's interesting um, that thing you said about, you know, the doubt that creeps in, you know, this imposter syndrome, right? Which is is when people suddenly think, oh my goodness, I'm going to put a book out there. I'm going to set myself up an expert. And then people are going to realize that I don't really know what I'm talking about or I'm not as expert as I am. And that's a, and that's a very natural thing. And I think it's a thing that holds a lot of people back because I don't think sometimes people realize how much they actually have achieved and what they have to offer. Totally. And that's what someone like me is for. To help pull it mm. out of you and actually so that you can say, I do know what I'm talking about in this area. Maybe not in everything, but in this area, I'm the expert. And, you know, the other place people get really triggered, which I think is funny, is headshots. You know, the headshots <laughs> on the back of the book, it, you know. And, and I just want to say, you know, get over yourself. It really doesn't matter that much. We're going to get a good professional headshot. You're going to look great and let's move yeah. on. Exactly. And, you know, let's the, the and here's a little secret. Nobody expects you to look exactly like your headshot. <laughs> no, I don't look like my headshot, especially I, I haven't had my hair cut in months. You know, I'm cold, cold and I, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't updated mine in a while. And my wife keeps saying, she goes, you know, that's probably the greatest photograph of you ever taken. And, yeah, uh, right. and it's a little old right now. And I'm like, yeah, I should update it. And I think, but it is a really good photo. <laughs> you know, here's the thing. We all have moods and hair mm. and aging and yeah, yeah. look different with lighting and, you know, so. Let's yeah. move on. And the thing is, because well, here's the, just on the thing of headshots, here's another funny thing is uh, you have a lot of people now who are, you know, they've replaced the the angst about headshot is and they've replaced it with angst about getting on, you know, webcams and being on video now. So I presume that's another thing that you've got to help people with, say, OK, you're going to be on camera. You're going to, you know, be on Zoom. You're going to um, be on webcasts. Uh, you know, you're probably we're going to be in promo videos. So you've got to also got to get over looking at yourself. You got to get over it. And, and, you know, here's the thing. Nobody really cares. <laughs> they, don't. they just want your message. If you have yeah. something that's about, so this is back to marketing, right? This mm-hmm. is back to sales copy and marketing and your book's exactly the same. If you have a message that your audience needs to hear, then um, that's what they care about, right? Yeah. They don't care about the headshot and everything else. Exactly, exactly. Um, okay, so once you've got somebody through the process, um, well, actually, do, do talk a little bit about how long the process can be. I mean, I know this could be a how long is a piece of string question, but yeah. how long is the pro- how yeah, long yeah. how long generally is a process? Or just give people some idea yeah. depending on on the type. So of So, if, if someone comes to us with just an idea, mm-hmm. then we say the writing process, if you're starting from zero, is somewhere between three months and a year. Yeah. And that's really between you and your book coach, how much you have to flush it out, what's really in there. If you have a lot of stuff online, blog posts, things that we can transcribe or reuse, repurpose and start working on a structure for a book, it'll go quicker. If you're committed, if you're going to go on vacation for two weeks and write, that will work. But after we have a first manuscript, then it goes into editing. And then probably another edit. 
We send out initial ARC copies, advanced copies for reviews, and we send it to a proofreader. Um, that whole process after the first manuscript is usually about three more months. Mm -hmm. So after, so it's got to go to editing and then it's got to go to layout and design. We have to go through extra proof again. By that time, we should have everything like back cover, book covers, all of those things. So it's the after, it's, it's the writing that takes the time and then it's about three months to publish it. Yeah, yeah, and and I think that's a that's a great uh, great outline for people to understand, you know, ballpark what the process kind of looks like from a time time point of view, because let's face it, I mean, it, it, you know, a book's not something you can really rush out either, is it? I mean, you can't. I mean, I'm sure you could if you really wanted it, but I mean, it's 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 something that needs real thought and process behind it, and in order to have a really good end product. Right, um, and once we get a good manuscript and it goes through professional editing, the rest we're pretty quick at. We're pretty good mm -hmm. at layout and design and finalizing everything, get it to publishing. Yeah. I guess you'd probably say, I mean, given the period that we're in, people have probably had more um, reflection time, shall we say, than they normally would, you know, because maybe they're at home, whatever. So this is probably a great time if you're ever thinking about a book to maybe put your ideas down on paper and talk to somebody like you. Uh, especially as we're moving back into maybe some cooler weather, people are outside a little bit less. It's a perfect time to start thinking about what is it that you want to say in the world? If you ever wanted to write a book, this is a great time to write a book. People are actually reading. That's a question I get all the time. Is anyone going to read it? Yeah, people are actually reading. You'd be amazed. So. It, it's I think I think that yeah, people I think have rediscovered reading, um, particularly now, and especially if you think about uh, you know, all the stuff that they're bombarded with online and in the media and everything. I think people are craving sort of stepping away a little bit and just you know having some time to to uh, to consume information in a more you know shall we say less hectic or or provocative fashion. Yeah, and we do audio books too, so. Mm -hmm. And exactly, because I was going to say, I mean, because I mean, that's another part, too, is I, uh, you know, for people who don't like to read, I mean, audiobooks are, are a great solution, and especially in business, because sometimes right. it's like sitting in your car listening, sitting on a plane or whatever it, it is, it's a great time to, um, it's a great, uh, audiobooks are a great solution for that. Totally. Perfect. Yeah. So, okay. In, in closing, Michelle, um, what is the, What is a, a couple of piece of advice you'd give to somebody who's watching this and thinking, okay, you know, maybe I have a book in me. What's, what's a couple of pointers you would give them? So the first thing is just to do a little bit of soul searching. Do mm -hmm. you want to write a book? Is it on your bucket list? Is it something you've always thought about? If the answers to those things are yes, then you've got to just step aside from your fear and start the process, right? Just start moving forward one step at a time. And we all do lots of stuff that's scary in our lives. So, you know, it's just not letting the fear stop you from moving forward. Then the second thing I would say is write your back cover of your book first. So if you're thinking about an idea, Pick up some books that are similar um, idea of what yours might be and read the back covers and then go write your back cover. Just really fast, whatever comes to mind. And that solidifies your idea. It might be something like um, when you're done reading this book, you're going to know exactly the three things that you need to identify to know exactly who your target market is and how to go after more of those people to build your business to heights you'd never known before right? Something yeah, exactly. like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I love that idea. And I love that idea about writing the back cover first, because I think that'll not only will that give you you know, a good insight into the ideas you have, but it's a great motivation, isn't it? That's almost in the visualization sense to say, okay, one day this will be on the back cover of a book. Absolutely. It solidifies it. It sort of puts the energy on the planet and says, here's my book. Yeah. Well, this has been fantastic, uh, Michelle, and all Michelle's information will be in her contributor bio, which is will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and your company. 
So I am the COO and co-founder of GracePointPublishing.com. We have five different presses. We're talking today about our business press, but if you have any kind of book in you, call me, find my website, talk to me, send me an email, hit me up on social media, send me a telepathic message, and maybe we'll hook up on a plane someday. Yeah, yeah, they that's fantastic. Hook up's not the right word. Yeah, my no. daughter would say, hook up's not the right word. I'm showing yeah. my age here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, you know, Michelle, as I always say to my 15-year-old son, I say, well, I'm too old to know everything, so. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, your your fifteen year old, my sixteen year old will be yeah. rolling your eyes at my Yeah, own. because you see they're lucky. They're young. They 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 know everything. Totally. Yeah. We're so, too old. We're we don't we're too old to know everything. Yeah. All right. Well listen, this has been great. Thanks very much, Michelle. Thanks, John. My name is John Golden, sales pop online, sales magazine, pipeline or CRM. See you all for another expert interview real soon. Thank you.